Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about do's and don'ts of room setup for audio files. Part two, a little bit more elaboration on some of our most viewed videos in this series. First things first, we got a container and we're going to put a lot of stuff in this container. Speakers, listing position, energy. Just like anything else, we do a lot of shipping of products. Our foam technology with different sizes, different boxes. Different pieces of foam go in different size boxes. Different speakers, amplifiers, listing positions, source choices, distribution of the speaker array into the room itself. We got to start with the right box. Okay, so we got to choose the right room size and volume. One, so we minimize low frequency pressure issues, right? That's the first thing we have to do. And then give enough distance for all of our gear to work well. Now, knowing that comes from lots of experience on what works and what doesn't. You're not going to find any of that in a textbook. We can give you some general guidelines and some things not to do and some things that you should do, okay? Here's a big problem we see all the time. We see huge speakers almost butted up against the ceiling. Saw a six foot tower, the old uh, Dunleavy, the big ones, you know, the big tall six footers, in a six and a half foot ceiling height. They have big 12 inch drivers top and bottom, you know, with the mids in the middle. Customer was very unhappy with the sound quality. Well, look at setup. Setup's critical in the beginning. You gotta get that speaker size to ceiling height, because that ceiling height is always the lowest of the three dimensions. It's going to cause the most problems. So we want to stay away from that. We don't want to get closer to a surface area that causes the most problems just because of its size. Forget about the material types and all of that, okay? The radiation pattern of the speakers. If our room is this way, or it's this way, Speakers are going to have different radiation patterns that have to be complemented. Most of the time in rectangular rooms, which by the way are the best sounding rooms, there's been study after study done about this. And the, I think the main reason is the predictability and the consistency of the problems. You know, you know in each sound field what problem in this quadrant, what problem in that quadrant, what problem in that quadrant you're going to have. Because, you know, it's predictable and consistent. This dimension is the same as this, this is this. So horns and dynamics, you know, this would be a great setup for horns because the sidewalls are farther away, you get a bigger distribution. Dynamics can work in narrow. A lot of times, though, with your dynamic drivers, it's, most of the time it's good to set up along the long wall also. What determines that? Not you, the room. The problems that the room has or will have if you put an energy source along that room boundary surface. So the room matters, not necessarily what, what you think. All right, so that talks about setup. Full range speakers, don't use a sub if you have full range speakers. Not in the beginning. Set up. Get the proper amount of treatment in. Get your distances adjusted. Spend some time voicing the room and tuning it. Moving speakers a little bit here, a little bit there. Because remember, every day, especially when you start to get older, your hearing can change. There's a lot of things that go on. Here's something I read the other day. When you start to get in your 50s and 60s, you get older, you, you generate a lot of mucus. And that mucus helps lubricate the body, the nasal cavities, the throat and all of that. Well, you start to produce, I think, a little bit more of it as you get older. So the bottom line here is it's going to change what you hear. You have more fluids in your nasal cavities, in your throat. All of those systems are part of the ear, so to speak. It's all, you know, when you, you say your voice or you record your voice and you play it back, well, that doesn't sound like me. What you're saying is that doesn't sound like how I hear myself, which is through your nasal cavities, your, your skull and your ears and everything is involved. So you got to be really, really careful. You have to make sure that you're matching up all of that information. Okay. Windows. Oh no. 
the worst surface you could have in any room, bar none. I mean, I've even noticed frequency response aberrations with glass. No glass, please. Okay, if we have it, we got to cover it. We also got to secure it so it doesn't go diaphragmatic on it with low frequency pressure. Okay, if you must have windows, put them behind you, behind the listening position. Gear on the floor, you know, we see a lot of this. I can't tell sometimes which is the speaker and which is the equipment rack. This area here between the speakers, it has to be free space because you got a lot of this going on with energy. You, can't, you put an equipment rack there, you just disrupt that whole situation, which is vital in stereophonic reproduction. If you look at the signal that goes through the left and you look at the signal that goes through the right channel, you'll understand that. Too complicated for this video, but you'll understand why you can't have anything here, okay? So get the gear on the floor, 12 inches max. Treat low frequency first because we gotta get the fundamental problems in the room. What are the f biggest fundamental problems in the room? Where do they lie? 30 to 50. What's the next series that we've tested? 30 to 300. Those are your two range. Obviously this fits inside of this. But this, we measured up 200 some rooms, was in every room. This, the top end would maybe quit a little bit sooner in some rooms depending on distance. But this is the frequency range we gotta kinda deal with. So we gotta treat the fundamentals because you know, they're responsible, 30 is responsible for 60, 90, 120, okay? So you gotta, you gotta watch all of that. All right, reflections, reverberation, time management, RT30, RT60 calculations, that's the waterfall graphs you see all the time. You want nice smooth graphs. If you were on a raft going down, that's what you want. Most of the waterfall graphs will smooth for a while and boop, a big peak, you crash, okay? Can't have that. Rate and level is critical in everything, absorption and diffusion, okay? You gotta know how much you're treating, what rate and what level. You have to, and you have to match that to the rate and the level of the problem. Or you get overabsorption, or you get too high reverberation times. There's that middle ground, which is governed by many other variables speech intelligibility indexes and things like that. So do's and don'ts of room setup for audio files part two. This concludes our revisiting uh, of our 10 most popular videos. I hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.